So in example five, we're going to reuse the scenario from example four. If you haven't just watched example four, you really want to go back and watch example four. Make sure that that makes sense to you before you start uh, working through example five. So it's the same scenario as in example four. We have a normally distributed population with variance uh, 0 0.67. I want to ensure that our sample mean, our sample mean means the average of the samples that we take, um, will be within 0.5 units of the population mean. Now the population mean is the average of the entire population, that's what we've been calling mu, and we want the probability to come out to be 95%, and since we're dictating the probability, we can't dictate the number of samples, so we're asking how many samples should we take. Uh, so let me work this out and, um, and show you how to think about this. First of all, uh, we kind of want our probability to be 95%. Let me think about that in terms of a picture. So we want some cutoffs where that we get 95% of the area in between those cutoffs. So I want those cutoffs to surround 95% of the area. If I kind of work backwards, uh, that means that the two tail areas collectively give me 5% of the area. So uh, those two tail areas, 1 minus 0.95 over 2, which is 0.05 over 2, which is 0.025. So I'm going to want the probability in the two tail areas to be uh, 0.025 each. Now, I want to figure out what uh, cutoff value of z would correspond to that, and I want to save myself uh, space on this slide, so I'm not going to show you the chart right away, but we'll see that on the next slide. You'll see that that corresponds to z equals 1.96. We'll look that up on the next slide, and you'll see that that's the z value we're looking for. So let's uh, put that on hold for now, and let me go back and uh, set up our standard normal variable. So we want y bar minus mu to be, or y bar and mu to be within uh, 0.5 units of each other, so 0 0.5. And I'm going to set up my standard normal variable just like before, where I multiply both sides by the square root of n over sigma. So I get a square root of n over sigma here. And uh, I'll fill in what I can. The problem is I don't know n right now. So that's going to be a little tricky. My z is going to be uh, the standard normal variable on the left, but I don't know what n is. Uh, but I do know what I want my z value to be, or at least I, I know that I want my z value to be between negative 1.96 and 1.96. So I'm going to put 1.96 in for my z value, my absolute value of z, and then I'm going to solve for the other quantities in this picture. 0.5, square root of n, oh, I don't know that. That's what I'm going to have to solve for. Sigma, I think I do know. Yeah, okay, so I'm given variance is 0 0.67. That tells me that sigma squared is the variance, is 0 0.67. Uh, so that's a square root of 0 0.67. And now what I'm going to do is solve this equation for n. Solve for n. And it's going to work out pretty well, it's, it's, it's a calculator exercise, really. So if I multiply over to the other side, I get 1.96 times um, the square root of 0 0.67 divided by 0 0.5 is less than or equal to the square root of n. And you know what? Dividing by 1 fifth is the same, because 1 fifth is 1 half. That's the same as multiplying by 2. So let me go ahead and multiply 1.96 by 2. That'll give me 3.92. And I still have the square root of 0 0.67. And that's supposed to be less than the square root of n. Let me square both sides now. Uh, I think I'm going to flip the n over to the other side. n is bigger than or equal to 3.92 squared, and if I square 0 0.67, square root of that, I'll just get 0 0.67 again. And now that's just a matter of dropping the numbers into a calculator, and I did that. Uh, what did I get? Um, when I dropped that into a calculator, I got 10.296296. Now, I've just solved for n, 
And remember that n is the number of samples we're going to take. Well, you can't take a fraction of a sample. So uh, you either take a sample or uh, uh, you, you take a whole number of samples. Um, so this 10.296 uh, doesn't make sense. So I'm going to round it up to be on the safe side. I'll take uh, n equals 11 samples. And that should be enough to get my probability where I want it to be. So that's my answer right there. n equals 11 samples. And that's the end of the problem, except to recap it and maybe to show you the, on the normal table where that 1.96 came from. So uh, let me recap the steps there. Uh, first, I was thinking that I wanted to have 95% in between whatever boundaries I found which means on the outsides of the boundaries, I'm going to have 5%, 0 0.05. And since they're two tails, I divide that by 2, and I got 0 0.025. So I'm looking for a cutoff that cuts off 0 0.025 of the area. And I'll show you on the next slide that um, uh, when we look at the normal table, z equals 1.96 will give us that cutoff. So that's the only part that I need to fill in on the next slide. Uh, meanwhile, over here, I was setting up my standard normal variable. I wanted uh, y minus mu, or y bar minus mu, to be within 0.5 units of each other. So that's why I set their absolute value of their difference less than 0.5. And then to set up my standard normal variable, I multiplied top and bottom by uh, square root of n over sigma. And that gives me my absolute value of z. And now I plugged in that z equals 1.96 here. And I also plugged in, oh, I don't have the square root of n because I don't know what n is. That's what I'm asking. How many samples should I take? So I have to leave that. But I can plug in sigma, which I figured out here to be the square root of 0.67. And now it's an algebra problem. So I manipulated the algebra a little bit. Uh, 1.96 divided by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2. So that's where that 3.92 came from. I'm solving for n. So I square both sides, and I get n bigger than 3.92 squared times 0 0.67. I just threw those numbers into my calculator. I, I wouldn't. Uh, want to do something like that by hand. What I got was uh, 10.296. But since we're talking about numbers of samples, we have to take a whole number of samples. So I rounded that up to be safe to take uh, n equals 11 samples. So that uh, pretty much wraps up example 5, except I have to show you where that 1.96 came from. And it really came from looking for 0 0.025 in the chart on the next slide. So. What we're doing here is I just want to justify to you uh, we wanted uh, the probability that z is bigger than some little cutoff value of z to be uh, 0 0.025. That's what we figured out on the previous slide. And so I'm looking for 0 0.025 in the chart here. Looks like these numbers are getting smaller, 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 smaller. Um, I keep looking through these numbers. Uh, here, they're getting close. 0 0.28, 0 0.0281, 0 0.0274, 0 0.0265, 0 0.0262, 0 0.0256, 0 0.0250. I found it. So there's my answer right there. And then I'm going to read off what row and column those came from. It came from 1.9 and uh, 0.06. So that means that my z value, my little z, is 1.96. And so the ats, that's where that uh, number came from. And I'll say we use that number, use on the previous slide, slide. And we did some more calculations with that to derive uh, that we want n to be 11 was the answer that we got. n equals 11 samples. So you can go back and watch the previous slide if you don't remember where that came from. I won't go over it again now, but you can just watch it again if you like. So what we did on this slide was we were looking for that cutoff that gave us a tail probability. Remember, this tail probability is what we're looking for. That was supposed to be uh, 0 0.025. And the real reason for that was that would make the other prob tail probability 0 0.025. And when you take those two probabilities away from one, 
you get in the middle, the probability is 0.95, which is what we were looking for. So that's kind of where we got the 0.025 from. But then we had to figure out which cutoff gave us that probability. So I found 0.025 in the table, read off its numbers 1.9 and 0.06, and I got z equals 1.96. And then I did some more calculations with that on the previous slide to get down to n equals 11 samples. So that wraps up this uh, lecture on sampling from a normal distribution. Uh, the next lecture is going to look very similar to this, but we're going to be using the central limit theorem. A lot of the examples will have a very similar flavor where we're sort of converting to a standard normal variable and then looking things up in the charts. But the difference is we're going to be using the central limit theorem, which means we won't have to start with a normal population anymore. When you use the central limit theorem, you can start with any population in the world and then answer these same kinds of questions about whether your sample mean is going to be close to your population mean. So I hope you'll stick around and learn the central limit theorem. It's probably uh, one of the most important results in probability. That's in the, ne in the next lecture. That's also going to be our last lecture in this series. We're getting near the end. Uh, so I really appreciate your sticking around with me to enjoy these probability lectures. Uh, this is uh, the probability lecture series here on educator.com. And I am your host. My name is Will Murray. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.